Today we're going to review this. It's the Precision Brewer from Sage, or Breville, depending where you are in the world. For me, it's Sage. And I'm going to tell you why this has been my go-to brewer for the last two years at home. This review has been two years in the making. It's because about two years ago, Sage got in touch and said, can we send you a machine? Let us know what you think. And I said, sure, that would be good. And I, and I got it, took it home, and it was kind of like a US version, but with UK power through it. It wasn't the dedicated UK machine that was going to come a couple months later. Two years later, well, here we are. They finally released the machine. And I gather they had some issues. The UK, London in particular, has very hard water, and they found that a challenge in testing for this brewer in this market. So they've gone away, changed a few things, added some upgrades. I'll talk about that in a second. And it is now available. So it's a kind of odd one for me. Most of my reviews are powered by Patreon. It means I go and buy products and I don't owe anyone anything. This is different because this was sent to me originally, or the first one, before I had a Patreon. And I said I would review it and I will honor my commitment, but know that unlike other Patreon reviews, this was uh, sent to me by the manufacturer. I'm not being paid to make the video. They don't get any influence or input into the video, but you should know I didn't pay for this and I've had one for two years. So let's dive into some just quick overview specs of this whole thing. It's an interesting approach to home brewers. It's 250 pounds in the UK, which puts it at the upper end of the, the sort of small batch brewer market for the home, but not at the very top, which I think is interesting. It's a very sage product. It looks like a sage product. It feels like a sage product. The brush metals they use, the kind of plastics, uh, the whole design aesthetic is very sage. And if you like that, you'll like this. If you hate that, you'll hate this. But I like it. I've got a couple of sage things at home and it kind of fits for me. Unusually, this thing can brew up to 1.8 liters, which is a lot of coffee, certainly for the home. That's a lot of cups of coffee in the morning for a family, but it doesn't have to brew at that kind of volume. It does a kind of clever thing. Inside the brew basket, you've got two brew sort of cones. You've got one cone like this, which is designed to use the kind of Melita style papers. I really like the Filtropa papers myself. But if you take that out, you've actually got a kind of flat bottomed brewer and it does come with papers for it. So you can brew larger volumes in this. With the cone brewer, which is my preferred brewer, you can brew up to 1.2 liters, which frankly, there's a lot, it's enough, it's more than I would need, but the extra is kind of interesting. More than that, you don't even have to use this brew basket. There is an adapter set that lets you put in a V60 or a Kalita or something, change the shower head and, and change the sort of piece here where it sits, and you can use whatever flat bottomed pour over brewer you want, whatever cone shaped brewer you want. You've got it, you wanna use it, you can use it. You can have an automated version of the thing that you brew with all the rest of the time. That's kind of cool. It does also come with a uh, metal filter basket. If you want to do that, if you want to go zero waste and not use paper whatsoever, this is an option. I'm generally not a huge fan of these things. I like them in principle. I just personally always prefer the taste of paper filtered coffee. Underneath, you've got a carafe. It is a thermal carafe, which is good. They do, I think, a version that is glass with the heating plate that nobody should buy ever. Just get the thermal carafe, just get the thermal Carafe. And then the tanks at the back. Pretty simple, pretty obvious so far. In the tank in the UK now, they've added one extra thing, which is this. It's a, it's a water softener, it's a little filter. Uh, it lasts about three months, and so you just set it and it will soften your water. When you turn on the machine for the first time, it will ask you how hard your water is. There's a test strip and stuff. That basically tells the machine how often to prompt you to descale it. While this is nice, I would still strongly recommend just putting good soft, clean water into your machine and not letting this do the, the softening. But if you have no option, then this is a good thing. So now we need to talk about why this is called the precision brewer, why it's a sort of smarter than average brewer and, and how the features inside might stack up to other brewers in the market. So in the control panel, day to day, there are three settings that you can use as kind of pre-programmed settings for brewing. They are fast, 
gold and strong. And they're really gonna change the flow rate for the machine. A fast brew is designed to just pump more water into the basket quicker, allowing your brew to happen in a quicker way in the morning. I've never really wanted to use that. Nothing about fast appeals to me, but it's a function and it's available. And again, strong, that's gonna be sort of more extracted, which in many ways is often good. But for me, I use the gold setting or I use my own programming most of the time. Now you can go in and set up what's called my brew. It's a kind of custom brewing setup. With that, you can control the bloom volume as well as the bloom time. You can control your overall flow rate from very slow to much quicker, and then you can control your brew temperature. And that gives you a single degree Celsius increments to change your brew temperature, which is extremely accurate. So this is kind of billed as being a very controllable, very uh, programmable brewer that does deliver consistent temperature. And in my experience, yet, yeah, it really does. So beyond that, there's a couple more things to talk about in the menu, one of which I'm not super interested in, which is the cold brew functionality. It's designed to sort of run overnight, so you can have it run for I think up to 14 hours, where it'll slowly pump water, uh, cold water into your brew basket. You don't put the lid on the carafe, it steeps it for a long time and then eventually drains it. I don't really like the taste of coffee brewed that way, that's just me, so I've had no interest whatsoever in using it. I don't use it. There's one more thing though that I do use on this that I'm a little bit ashamed of in a way. This machine has an auto start and sometimes, sometimes I might grind my coffee before going to bed and put it in the brew basket and have the machine come on at like six in the morning if I have to get up early. And I kind of love getting up to fresh made coffee. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I'm aware that grinding fresh is best, but I'm also aware that if it's an eight hour window, yeah, I'm losing something, but I'm not the world's most perceptive coffee taster at six in the morning. I just want it to taste really good. So I'm happy to lose a little bit of aromatic um, complexity in exchange for someone having me a fresh pot of coffee ready at 6 a.m. That's the deal. So I use that more than I suspect I should tell people I do. I like it, it's a nice little function. It's not unique to this, but it's a nice function to have there. So, so far, I've had nothing really bad to say about this brewer. And in fairness, I have really enjoyed using it for the last two years. It's been a steady, staple, reliable part of my morning brewing routine. That doesn't mean that I have no complaints or quibbles or things that I should highlight along the way. So firstly, the water tank in the UK version They've done a kind of annoying thing to me. They've converted it from uh, Imperial to metric. Thank you very much. But they have left the lines in the same place, which were, I think, 20, 30, 40 ounces. And then I think 60 ounces for the largest size. So on here, you've got like a, like a 900 mil mark. I'm just not brewing 900 mils of coffee very much. I would like a litre mark. I would like a half litre mark. I, I, I just feel that's a reasonable thing to ask for. I've come to accept this. I mean, I'm already brewing US ratios at home, but I had hoped with the release of a UK brewer, they'd have just, they'd have just gone in at the kind of half one litre thing, you know? Now, when it comes to the two brewers in here, I think the cone-shaped brewer brews significantly better than the flat-bottomed brewer. My theory is it's the shower head that's really optimized for that kind of cone shape in terms of coverage, in terms of um, agitation disruption as it's brewing. It brews really nicely. I've just struggled to match the quality on the 1.8 liter brews on the flat bottomed brews. Even with a thicker bed depth, it just I've just struggled to really, really, really get the same quality in the cup. It's a funny thing, but I also wish this was a removable water container. I think there are a couple of brewers out there, like the, the Top End Wilfer Brewer, where you can just take the water tank out. It just makes it easier to fill. I just, I think it's a nicer experience. It's not particularly difficult to do. I don't think this has to be mounted on here. With the carafe, I do like the design, but it suffers the same frustrations that every carafe suffers, which is you can't pour out absolutely everything. There's always just like a little bit left over. I don't understand. It's, it's in every carafe and it just makes me angry. When you're brewing with the, the cone-shaped filter, some coffee will get out into the kind of uh, open basket area. 
if you just rinse out the cone and don't remove this, you will not rinse out all the coffee that's under here. So it's easy to have a little bit of accumulation here, you know, and you pull this out now and again and be like, ugh, and, and it needs a clean. So um, I, I was a bit lazier to start with until I opened this up one day and was slightly disgusted with myself. But just be aware, you need to pull this out every time to clean it properly. And so there it is. There is the Sage Precision Brewer. It's a brewer that I have enjoyed using for two years. At 250 pounds, it's not cheap, but I think it's actually a pretty great investment in your morning brews. I think if you need something to do larger volumes, something like one and a half to two liters often, then I would buy a small commercial brewer. They're not much more expensive, but the, the shower head and basket combo is usually a little bit more effective at brewing that way. That said, I can't think of many cheaper commercial brewers that have the level of control uh, and programmability that this thing has. So I could see these in small offices, you know, it's batch brew in cafes that don't so much batch brew. I've no idea on commercial warranties, but at home, yeah, it's good. It's big, no question. And you know, that's a big old thing. I'm okay with that. I've got the space. It's never really bothered me, but so in comparison to other brewers, in the past I've had both a Technovom and also the, the sort of high-end Wilfer brewer as well. I liked both of those brewers, I, I enjoyed the coffee that they made, but neither of them had the kind of feature set and the reliability and the control that this thing has. It's, it's a different brewer in many regards to those brewers. I'm genuinely impressed uh, and I find it an easy recommendation. And so I'd really be interested to hear from you. Do you have one of these? I mean, these have been out for two, three years and a lot of the world. Do, do you still have it? Do you still use it every day? Have you had issues that I haven't mentioned yet? What did I miss? What didn't I talk about? I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts. And maybe there's another brewer at the price point that I'm just not seeing that I should check out. Leave me a comment down below. I'm gonna say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.